Okay, let's go ahead and get started. I want to start by uh, talking a little bit today about something called dimensional analysis. Now, as is often the case in, chem in science and chemistry uh, specifically, something that sounds very difficult can be very easy if you just know the steps, if you understand the protocol. And that's what we're going to try to get at today, understanding the steps involved in dimensional analysis. And actually, you've probably already done dimensional analysis without even knowing it. If you've ever gone to maybe a grocery store or a convenience store and asked the clerk to uh, give you change for a dollar maybe, that's dimensional analysis because dimensional analysis is really nothing more than conversions conversions from one unit to another unit. So once you know how to do it, it's going to breeze, be a breeze for you from that point forward. So we're going to need this certainly in chemistry, especially for a core unit of chemistry that's known as stoichiometry. But we're also going to need it for things like physics and engineering classes that we'll encounter later on that require that we be able to go from one unit to a different unit. So let's go ahead and get started. We're going to start by learning that dimensional analysis really doesn't even have to be uh, in a scientific realm, we can take just uh, any old situation, like for example, finance. Uh, I have a friend, her name is Jenna, and Je Jenna is traveling to Europe. She's been saving a lot of money for a long time. She's been saving $812.58, and she wants to take that with her on her trip to Europe. And she wants to know when she arrives in Paris, how many euros, that's the currency in Europe that she'll be using, how many euros does this represent? Well, she immediately goes to the currency booth and she sees that 1.00 euros is equal to $1.42, that's US dollars. So that's the current exchange rate. May change tomorrow, but for right now, that's what it is. 1.00 euros is equal to 1.42 US dollars. Students often ask me, where do I start? How do I begin the problem? And I always tell them, well, let your pen lead your brain. And what I mean by that is just doing something physically, physically with your pen is going to get your brain started in the right direction. So what do you do with your pen to get the problem started? Well, the first thing you're going to want to do is you're going to want to find any numbers that are in the problem. Okay, Look around for numbers. And often, very often in chemistry problems, you'll see that there's only one number in the problem. Circle that number together with the unit. And that's, in this case, $812.58. That gets you started. So even if you don't know how to do the problem, do that much. Find the number and circle it together with its unit. The next thing you're going to do is you're going to look for what they're asking. How many euros? Underline that. You may say, I still don't know how to do this problem. You're going to be amazed using this technique how far you can get without really knowing how to do the problem itself. Let the pen lead the brain. Whatever you've circled, you're going to put that number over one. I'm going to cover this because I'm going to hide that for just a little while. You're going to take the number that you've circled and you're going to put it over one together with its unit. In other words, we're going to start with $812.58 and we're going to divide it by one. Why divide by one? Two reasons. First of all, it's mathematically legal. Anything divided by one is itself. So it's mathematically okay for me to divide by one, but more importantly, it holds the place. Students sometimes get confused on what's the numerator and what's the denominator. This way it's clear. $812.58 is the numerator, one is the denominator. Notice we haven't done any thinking so far. We still may not know how to do the problem, but we've at least started the process. The next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna make a multiplication sign just like that, just next, right next to it. And the next thing we're going to do is we're going to put a long division line, kind of like that one right there, a division line right there. Now, whatever unit is there in the upper left-hand corner is going to go in the lower right-hand corner. Notice I said unit and not number. So we're going to copy the unit from there to there, but not the number. And then we're going to look to see what we're being asked for and look to see if we have an appropriate conversion. We're looking for euros, so I'll put euro right there. Now notice to this point, again, I really haven't done any thinking. I'm just copying from place to place and doing everything by strict protocol. Copying this to there, placing it over one, every time over one, times whatever unit's there, I'm going to copy there. Whatever number is next to the unit, whatever number is next to the unit, in the conversion, I'll put next to the unit in this area right here. $1.42, $1.42 is the equivalent of 1.00 euros. That's from the conversion. 
Now, why do I do that? Well, I do that for two reasons. First of all, because I want to get rid of this unit. I want to get rid of the dollar sign here, and I'm going to do it with this dollar sign here. The second reason is because of the fact that it's mathematically legal. What I'm really doing is multiplying by 1, because anything divided by itself is 1. 1.00 euros is the same thing as $1.42. So by dividing by 1, I'm, that's a mathematically acceptable procedure, and now I'm multiplying by 1 to do the same thing, but I'm going to be more positioned to get at my solution once I divide and then multiply by 1. What I'm going to do now, though, is I'm going to cancel. Dollars cancel with dollars, and I'm left with euros. I'll look to see if that's what I'm being asked for. And that is exactly what I'm being asked for, euros. So that means I'm done, and I can get out my calculator. Now, students will often ask, do I multiply or divide? Well, if this second number is on the bottom, I'll divide. If it's on the top, I'll multiply. Notice, anything times 1 is itself. Anything divided by 1 is itself. So don't worry about 1s. The question is, do I multiply or divide 812.58 by 1.42? I divide because it's on the bottom. And when I do that, this is the number that appears on my calculator, 572.239. Now let's talk a little bit about significant digits. I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 significant digits here. This is an exact number, and exact numbers do not limit my number of significant digits. This also is an exact number. I could have easily have written 1.000 and continued forever. So this will not limit my significant digits either. I have one, two, three significant digits here. I'll take the lower of five and three, which is three. So the 572.239, I'll underline the first three numbers because I can only have three significant digits. I'm limited by three significant digits here. 572, I'll look to the next digit to see if it's five or greater. It's not. So I'll leave it at 572 euros. 572 euros is the equivalent of $812.58, and I'm done with the first problem, okay? All right, let's, let's continue to follow Jenna through her, through her vacation in Europe. She's now in Vienna, and while in Vienna, Jenna added 22.8 liters of fuel to her rental car. 22.8 liters of fuel to her rental car. How many gallons is, does this represent? Well, this is the conversion that I'm going to need. 1.0 liters is equal to 0 0.264 gallons. Remember the procedure that I've taught you is to look for numbers in the problem and circle them. 22.8 liters, and then look to see what I'm being asked for. How many gallons? Underline that. Let the pen lead the brain. Whatever I've circled now, I'm going to write right here. 22.8 liters, put that over 1 every time. Put it over 1 every time times whatever unit is there goes there. Not the number, just the unit. So 22, um, excuse me, liters goes here, so liters goes there, and whatever unit I want goes there. What am I looking for? I'm looking for gallons. I'm looking for gallons, so I'll put gallons in the upper right-hand corner. Now, do I have an appropriate conversion? I certainly do. I know that 1.0 liters is equal to 0.264 gallons. 1.0 liters is the equivalent of 0 0.264 gallons. Now what I'm going to do is cancel. I'll cancel liters with liters, and I'm left with gallons. That is exactly what I'm being asked for, so I'm done. I can get my calculator out at that point and multiply 22.8 by 0.264. Why multiply? Because both are on top, and when both are on top, I'm going to multiply. When I do that with my calculator, I get 6.0192. Let's talk a little bit about significant digits. Three here, leading zeros never count. Three here. 1.0 liters, that's an exact number. It could have easily have been 1.0000 for infinity. So I don't let that kind of number limit my significant digits in my solution, in my product. So I've got three here, I've got three here it's going to be three significant digits. Let's take a look at these first three numbers. 6.01, look at the next digit. Is it five or bigger? Yes, it is. That will push the one up to a two, and I get 6.02 gallons. That's how many gallons, if I were to measure in gallons, or Jenna was to measure in gallons, of gasoline or fuel that she added to her uh, rental car. All right, 
Okay, let's go on, go on to another problem. This one's a little bit more geared toward chemistry, but it's the same procedure. It says Javier measures out 215.4 grams of sodium hydroxide. How many milligrams is, is this? What's the first thing I do? If I don't know how to do a problem, I look for numbers. A circle, 215.4 grams of sodium hydroxide. How many milligrams is this? Underline the word milligrams. That's going to get my brain started. Take what you've circled, write it over one. 215.4 grams of sodium hydroxide over one. The next thing I'm going to do is write a multiplication sign, and whatever unit is here is going to go right there. And whatever unit I'm looking for, and what is it? Milligrams. Goes right there. Now, I'm not always going to be able to do a direct conversion. It may sometimes require additional steps, but I'm going to look to see if I know the relationship between milligrams and grams. Milli, I know, means thousand. There are a thousand milligrams in one gram. A thousand milligrams in one gram. So what do I do now? I'm going to cancel. I cancel grams of sodium hydroxide with grams of sodium hydroxide and what I have left is milligrams. That's the unit I'm looking for. Do I multiply or do, do I divide? Both are on top so I'll multiply. But I don't really need a calculator. Look, 215.4 grams of sodium hydroxide times a thousand. Well, I know that 1,000 is the same thing as 10 to the third. It's 10 times 10, which is 100, times another 10, which is 1,000. So 10 to the third is the equivalent of 1,000. So rather than getting a calculator out, I'm just going to say 215.4 times 10 to the third. 215.4 times 10 to the third milligrams of sodium hydroxide. Isn't this one significant digit? No. That's exactly a thousand milligrams. It doesn't, I'm not limited by that thousand or that one for that matter in terms of significant digits. This is what limits me. I have four significant digits here. I'll need four significant digits here. Now, that's not quite scientific notation. So, what I'll do is I'll move the decimal place over once, twice to make it 2.154. I've diminished this number by a factor of 100. Every time I move the decimal, I'm minimi or lowering the number by a factor of 10. If I move it twice, 10 times 10 is 100. So I'm making this number 100 times smaller. Well, I can't just arbitrarily make this number smaller without making up for it somewhere else. I'm going to make up for it over here. 10 to the third times 100 is 10 to the fifth. 100, remember, is 10 squared, so when I add exponents, that's what I do when I multiply. I add exponents, 10 to the third plus or times 10 squared is 10 to the fifth. So we have 10 to the fifth milligrams of sodium hydroxide and my answer is complete, okay? All right, let's take a look at another problem. This involves Melanie. Melanie measures 240 grams of sodium hydroxide. Now notice on the 240, there's a decimal right there. That makes this zero significant. In other words, I have one, two, three numbers that are significant instead of just two by virtue of that decimal right there. The question is how many milligrams, how many kilograms, I'm sorry, is this? How do I start? This, well, I start the same way as I've started every other time. Circle what I know. Circle the number, 240 grams. And then ask yourself what, I'm look, what you're looking for. How many kilograms? Underline the word kilograms. All right. What do I write first? Well, you're either going to have to write the number that you circled or you're going to have to just make up a number. I don't re recommend that you do that. So instead, write the number that you've circled, 240, put the decimal, don't forget the decimal. It'll be important with regard to, with regard to significant digits in just a moment. So 240 grams of sodium hyd hydroxide divided by what? Divided by one. That holds the place. Times whatever unit is here is going to go there. Whatever unit I want is going to go right there. What do I want? What am I looking for? I'm looking for kilograms of sodium hydroxide. So kilograms of sodium hydroxide goes on top. What do I do next? Well, this and this cancel. That's not by accident. That's by design. I put a grams of sodium hydroxide down here for that very reason. So now I'll ask myself, am I done? Do I have the unit that I was looking for? I have kilograms of sodium hydroxide. Yes, indeed, that's what I'm looking for, so I'm done. How many grams are there in a kilogram? 
A thousand grams in a kilogram. A thousand grams in a kilogram. A gram is about the mass of a paper clip. So that gives you some idea of a thousand paper clips would be one kilogram. So now what do I do? Do I multiply or divide? Well, I have 240 on top and I have a thousand on body on bottom. I'm going to divide. Again, I don't need a calculator. I don't need a calculator. What I can do instead is simply recognize that I'm really dividing by 10 to the third. Am I not? There's a, ten, a thousand is the same thing as 10 to the third. So if I say 240 divided by 10 to the third, that's 240, don't forget the decimal, times 10, not to the third, but to the negative three. You got that? Because it's on the bottom, it's a negative three. So 240 times, not 10 to the third, but 10 to the negative third. What's the unit? Kilogram of sodium hydroxide. That's what's left. So there's my answer. Let's put it in scientific notation. I'm going to move the decimal place over once, twice. I'm making this number 100. I'm making this number by going from 240 to 2.40 100 times smaller. 100 times smaller. 2.40 is 100 times smaller than 240. So I have to compensate by making this number 100 times bigger. Now, at first you may think, well, that's 10 to the minus 5. No, no, no. That's 10. If I say 10 to the minus 5, that's a, remember, if, if it's negative numbers, if it's negative, as I go from negative 3 to negative 4 to negative 5, I'm getting smaller. I need this number to be bigger by a factor of 100. So 10 to the minus 3 times 100 is 10 to the minus 2 and then 10 to the minus 1. So 10 to the minus 1 is 100 times bigger than 10 to the minus 3. And that's my final answer. It's in scientific notation. I get 2.40. Should that 0 be there? You bet. I have three significant digits here. I have infinite here, infinite there. I need three significant digits my answer. If I don't put that 0 there, I have only two. That decimal renders that 0 significant. 2.40 times 10 to the minus 1 kilogram sodium hydroxide is my final answer. Thank you, Melanie. Okay, Jason. Jason has this problem. He measures he measures 3.80 liters of hydrochloric acid of HCl and he wants to know how many cubic centimeters does this represent? All right. I don't know how to do this problem. What do I do? Let the pen lead the brain. 3.0 liters of hydrochloric acid. What am I looking for? Cubic centimeters. Take what you've circled and put that number over 1. We have 3.80 liters of HCl. We divide that by 1, right? That holds the place. The next thing I'm going to do is multiply by whatever unit is there goes there. Whatever unit is here goes here. And whatever, whatever I'm, unit I'm looking for is going to go on top. Now, here's the problem. I don't know how many cubic centimeters there are in a liter. You may know, but I don't. But I do know how many cubic, how many milliliters there are in a liter, and I'm going to have to do this in multiple steps. That's okay. It will often happen that I have to do it in multiple steps because I don't know a specific conversion. But I can still get the problem done. So I'm not going to put cubic centimeters here. I'm going to put milliliters because I know how many milliliters there are in a liter. There are a thousand. There's a thousand milli means thousand. Milli means thousandth of a, milli, a milliliter is a thousandth of a liter, okay? So I put those numbers in, a thousand milliliters is one liter, and then what I do is I cancel there and there. I ask myself at that point, am I done? Am I looking for milliliters? Well, no, I have underlying cubic centimeters, so it's not time to get the calculator out now. Keep working, put another multiplication sign right there, Put a division sign right there. Whatever unit's there goes there. If milliliters was there, milliliters goes there. Whatever unit I want goes there. Well, I happen to know that one cubic centimeter is equal to one milliliter. Let me write that. One centimeter cubed is equal to one milliliter, okay? One cubic centimeter is equal to one milliliter. And so now I have my conversion. Milliliter cancels with milliliter, and I'm left with cu cubic centimeter. Is that what I'm looking for? That is, in fact, what I'm looking for. That says cubic centimeter right there. I'm done. Time to get the calculator out. I have 3.80 times 100, 1,000, I'm sorry. It's on the top, so it's times. These are just one, so I'm going to multiply 3.80 times 1,000. No need for a calculator. 
A thousand is the same thing as 10 to the third, so I, my answer would be 3.80 times 10 to the third. What unit is left? Cubic centimeters. Do I take this zero off? No, I have one, two, three significant digits here, infinite number of significant digits here, infinite here, infinite there, infinite there. I wanna keep that zero, 3.0, excuse me, 3.80 times 10 to the third cubic centimeters. That's my final answer, and thank you, Jason. All right, the next one, this is Leo, all right? Leo, okay? Leo ran 1.8 kilometers. Leo ran 1.8 kilometers. How many centimeters did he run? All right, what do I do? I start with what I know, 1.8 kilometers. What am I looking for? Centimeters. Write what you know over one. 1.8 kilometers over one. Start there. Even if you don't know what you're doing, 1.8 kilometers over one. 1.8, excuse me, what I'm going to do is whatever unit is here is going to go right there. Kilometers here, kilometers there, and however, whatever I'm looking for goes there. I don't know how many centimeters there are in a kilometer. So I have to go to the base unit, which is the meter. The meter is there's a thousand meters in one kilometer. Kilo means a thousand, right? Milli means thousandth, but kilo means a thousand. So there's a, there's a thousand meters in one kilometer. A thousand meters in one kilometer. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to cancel this with this. I'm going to ask myself, if that, is that what I'm looking for? Am I looking for meters? No, I'm not looking for meters. Keep going. Don't get the calculator out just yet. Keep going. What I mean by keep going? Multiply by whatever unit's there goes there. Not the number, just the unit. Whatever unit's there goes there. And whatever unit I want is going to go right there. I'm looking for centimeters. Do I know how many centimeters there are in a meter? You bet. There's 100 centimeters in a meter. There's 100 centuries in a, in a, 100 years in a century. There's 100 uh, legs on a centipede. There's 100 cents in a dollar. I know what centi means. It means 100, okay, in a meter. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to cancel meters with meters. Now, I don't need a calculator because I know a little bit about exponents. 1.8 times 1,000 is the same thing as 10 cubed. 1,000 is the same thing as 10 cubed. And 100 is the same thing as 10 squared. So 1,000 times 100, remember, add exponents 3 plus 2, 10, to the, 10 cubed, plus 10 squared, add the three and the two, you get 10 to the fifth. So I have 1.8, 1.8 times 10 to the fifth centimeters. Is that what I'm looking for? Yes. Then that's my final answer. Is it in, significant, is it in scientific notation? Yes, it is. Do I have too many significant digits? Two here, these don't count because there's unlimited number of significant digits here. That's my final answer, 1.8 times 10 to the fifth centimeters. By the way, Leo Manzano from the University of Texas runs this race, 1.8 kilometers. He does it as well as anybody in the world. Uh, at any rate, that's who I was thinking of when I did that problem. Let's take a look at number seven. Number seven is an aluminum block has a mass of 2.32 times 10 squared kilograms. How many centigrams is this? How many centigrams is this? Well, you know the routine now. Look for numbers. 2.32 times 10 squared kilograms underline what I'm looking for. 2.32 times 10 squared kilograms, put that over one. You see how this is starting to get easy. Kilograms is here, kilograms is here. Cancel kilograms with kilograms and I'm left with, well, uh, what I'm trying to find is centigrams. The problem is I don't know how many centigrams there are in a kilogram. So I have to go through the basic unit, which is a gram. There is a thousand grams in one kilogram. A thousand grams in one kilogram. So I've canceled this with this. Do I get the calculator out at this point? No, because that's not what I'm looking for. What I'm looking for is centigrams, so I have to keep going. Whatever unit is here, whatever unit is here, is going to have to go there. So grams here, grams there. What am I looking for? I'm looking for centigrams. Do I ha know how many centigrams are there are in a gram? Yes, there's a hundred centigrams in a gram. Grams will cancel with grams, and I'm left with centigrams. Now, before you reach for the calculator, all right, let's take a look at this. A thousand is the same thing as 10 to the third, and a hundred is the same thing as 10 squared, 
And so when I multiply 10 to the third times 10 squared, remember I add exponents, that's 10 to the fifth. Don't forget that these two combined are 10 to the fifth. Watch now. My answer then is 2.32, 2.32 times squared times 10 to the fifth from these two combined, 2 plus 5, 7, times 10 to the seventh centigrams. That's my final answer. That's my final answer. And we come to the last problem. All right, this one involves density. This one involves the density of water. The density of water is one gram per cubic centimeter. In other words, if I had a block of water, a centimeter by a centimeter by a centimeter, that block would weigh one gram. What is the value of this in milligrams per milliliter? All right, now this time, it's going to require that we, we change both the top and the bottom, a conversion of both the numerator and the denominator. How does it work? Well, they're telling me that the, the, the density is one gram per cubic centimeter. So let me write that, one gram per one cubic centimeter. So I'll start there. Now times, remember our protocol counts, calls for whatever unit is here in the upper left-hand corner goes in the lower right-hand corner. Grams here and grams there. And whatever unit I want is gonna go on top. Now I'm looking for a value of milligrams per milliliter milligrams per milliliter. So I know milligrams is gonna to have to go on top. Do I know how many milligrams there are in a gram? Sure I do. Milli stands for a thousandth. So there's a thousand milligrams in a gram. This will cancel with this. I'm left with milligrams on top. Now I still have cubic centimeters on the bottom. I don't want cubic centimeters on the bottom. I want milliliters on bottom. So I'm gonna to have to do another conversion. Times, as always, uh, what we're going to do is this. We're going to need to get this cubic centimeters. Remember, the milligrams is okay. We need to get this uh, centimeters converted to milliliters. This time it's on the bottom. So what we're going to have to do is put cubic centimeters on top and put milliliters on bottom. I happen to know that one cubic centimeter is the equivalent of one milliliter. So when I cancel cubic centimeters with cubic centimeters, the only thing that's left is milliliters. So what am I left with in the end? Milligrams per milliliter. That's exactly what I wanted. All of these values are one, except this one. So it's 1,000 milligrams per milliliter. That's my density in milligrams per milliliter. Let's convert that to scientific notation. We have one times 10 to the third milligrams per milliliter. Don't put a decimal and then a zero because there is only one significant digit here because of the fact that uh, I only had one significant digit in each one of these. Even the thousand has only one significant digit. So don't put 1.0 times 10 to the third. It should simply be one times 10 to the third milligrams per milliliter. That's the end of part one. And in the next part, we're gonna be looking at some problems that are a little bit more uh, related to the chemistry type situations that we'll see in our own class. All right, see you there. Thank you.